was quarantine invented and what does that have to do with one of the worst pandemics ever in history, the bubonic plague? And where does COVID-19 fall among all this? The origin of quarantine, bubonic plague to COVID-19 and quarantine today. In the mid 1300s, a destructive pandemic of the bubonic plague called the Black Death struck Europe and Asia. It appeared in October of 1347 in Europe with the docking of 12 ships coming from the Black Sea at the Sicilian port of Messina. People who witnessed this were petrified at the sight of dead and severely afflicted sailors whose bodies were wrapped in black boils which oozed pus and blood. The Sicilian authorities promptly instructed the ships of death out of the harbor. It was, however, too late. Little did they know that this Black Death would be their rival for the next five years. A large number of Europeans had heard rumors regarding a grave ailment wreaking havoc over the trade passage of Far and Near East prior to the arrival of ships of death at the port of Messina. The disease was indeed present in Egypt, India, Syria, Persia, and China in the early 1340s. Although the disease is considered to have arrived in Asia more than 2,000 years ago and is expected to have dispersed by trading ships, modern research has conveyed that the infectious agent that caused the pandemic may have been in Europe even in the 3000 BC. The pandemic of bubonic plague, referred to as the Black Death, is caused by the bacteria Yersinia pestis that also causes the other two types of plagues, pneumonic plague and septicemic plague. The bubonic plague intrudes into the body's lymphatic system and causes the inflammation of the lymph nodes. It can even spread to the blood and cause septicemic plague or to the lungs and cause pneumonic plague. The bubonic plague causes buboes, which are awful swollen lymph nodes in the neck, groin, or underarms. Did you know that some scholars believe Ring Around the Rosy Nursery Rhyme is about the Black Death? In his book, The Black Death 1346 to 1353, The Complete History, Ol Jorge Benedicto estimated that the plague wiped out about 60% of the population of Europe, which amounts to about 50 million deaths. You may expect that the plague no longer exists. However, that is in fact not the case. According to the World Health Organization, 3,248 cases of plague, which includes all three types of plague, but bubonic plague is the most common, were recorded from 2010 to 2015. Unlike in the 14th century, the plague is now curable in the majority of cases. Antibiotics can successfully treat it. According to the CDC, the risk of death for a person can be lowered to approximately 11% with prompt treatment. In the past, however, people had no scientific comprehension of controlling the disease, but they understood that the spread of the disease was related to proximity. Some officials in Ragusa, a port city, isolated sailors until they were proved to be healthy. In the beginning, the sailors were isolated for 30 days in their ship, which was called Trentino by the Venetian law. Within a century, the duration was extended to 40 days, which was referred to as Quarantino. This marked the origin of the word and its emergence in the Western world. Now, you may wonder why exactly 40 days? It is believed that 40-day quarantine was prescribed due to its great religious and symbolic importance to medieval Christians. The Black Death marked the origin of the word, but the practice of isolating the sick can be traced further back in time. There have been references of isolating patients with leprosy in the Bible. Currently, according to the CDC's article, History of Quarantine, the Division of Global Migration and Quarantine is included in CDC's NCEZID, National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases. This division is authorized to medically examine conditionally release or detain any wildlife or individual that is suspected of carrying a communicable disease. So, how does the pandemic of COVID-19 compare to the bubonic plague of the 14th century? The number of deaths from bubonic plague in the 14th century amounted to more than 50 million according to the WHO. In comparison, there have been 5.21 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide and 338,000 deaths as of May 22, 2020. Additionally, it was predicted that those infected with the bubonic plague had about 50% survival chance and compared to the younger generation, older people faced a higher risk of death from the Black Death. It also disproportionately afflicted individuals like older people and people with compromised health, 
presumably because of a compromised immune system. In comparison, according to the World Health Organization, we are still understanding how COVID-19 affects people, but it has been observed that people of all ages can get COVID-19. But the elderly population and people with underlying medical conditions are more vulnerable to develop serious illness. As Dr. Snowden describes in his book, Epidemics in Society, From Black Death to the Present, infectious diseases fundamentally change the course of human history by altering politics, economy, and everything to come thereafter. As Dr. Snowden addresses in his book, the outbreak of infectious diseases presents us with two options. In this outbreak of COVID-19, we can either fall into the traps of xenophobia, creation of stereotypes, tribalism, or we can try to build a better world that is more humane and rational. During the spread of bubonic plague, pseudo-ideas including xenophobia, divisiveness, alienation, blame, and condemnation emerged. In Strasbourg, France, 200,000 Jews were rounded up in a Jewish cemetery by Strasbourg citizens who blamed the religion of the Jews for the poisoning of the wells where Christians drank, and they regarded this as the cause of the bubonic plague. The Jews were compelled to either renounce their religion or be executed right away. That day, half of the Jews stuck to their religion and were burned alive on the spot. Plagues have provoked immense anxiety and dreadful responses, however, it has not always been gloomy. There have been legacies of illnesses in the past where we chose the positive option like those of typhoid and cholera, which gave us spacious urban centers broad avenues, and other sanitary practices. As described in the book, The Black Death and the Future of Medicine by Sarah Van Est, the Black Death may not have directly spurred radical medical developments, but it did accelerate these advancements. It also pressed the need for curative measures and practical medical answers more than the previously existing cautionary theories. Global epidemics in the past, like bubonic plague, Ebola or smallpox have incited mixed responses, however, the pandemic of COVID-19 is not a history yet. Our response to it would be one of the most significant choices we ever make in our lifetime. We can choose to get engulfed by prompt fear and immediate anxiety, or we can choose to go down the path of intelligent and humane response.